Uh, Marcus, it, it trains with Sean Williams, who, you know, you guys were listening to the live stream. Sean uh, just had to step out to coach uh, Marcus. Um, he was a wrestler, uh, state champion. Um, I'm, not, I'm assuming he's, uh, that's Tennessee. Uh, and um, he's, he's been involved in some other martial arts. He's a black belt in Hapkido. Uh, and uh, he, uh, he, he's competing here at uh, uh, Blue Belt. His opponent is Brett Monbeck. Uh, Brett is, uh, he, he's an, uh, MMA, he, he trains at Bobcat MMA uh, under Gary Hashman and Butch Hiles. Uh, he started in MMA and catch wrestling and he's, he's since been really, really fallen in love with jujitsu. Um, yeah, you know what, catch wrestling, uh, for me, I love catch wrestling. I think it's very basic jujitsu but they have great submissions. For no gi, I think it's very effective, very effective. What, what do you think are some, some of the differences between catch wrestling and jiu-jitsu? Well, jiu-jitsu has more submissions and more variations, but catch wrestling has positions that they actually dominate you and uh, you know go for whatever they want. Like it, awkward situations that people don't expect, they do that, you know? Yeah. The first one that called my attention in catch wrestling was, uh, uh, remember Rico Schiaparelli? Like he was a great yes. wrestler. Yeah. But you. Like, when he wrestled, he looks like a jiu-jitsu guy, you know? Yeah. That's why people didn't know, but he was doing that already. Uh, Josh Barnett is a That's right, catch yeah. wrestler, too, you know? Those, Those guys, guys are tough. And Josh has been pretty successful in jiu-jitsu. I remember when he won Nogi Worlds. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and competed. Looks like the action's near the edge of the mat here. Uh, we have some specific rules in this event for the edge of the mat. Um, if they go out of bounds in a dynamic position, uh, not not so much where they're at now in a half guard. Uh, they'll, they'll reset. We would right? try to reset in a half guard. But if they if it's a dynamic position, we'd probably reset them neutral. The referee should reset them neutral. If they go out of bounds with a submission, they get a warning. And if they get one more of those, they lose. So you know whether they're trying to flee or not, if they go out of bounds in a submission, they only get one more of those, and then uh, the match is over, and uh, the person who was in the submission loses. Okay. So that's that's some of our out of bound rules. Yeah, he's trying to, to to pass the half guard. Sometimes like people get uh, get you know a little upset because they're trying to pass the half guard. They don't know how to how to get the leg free, and you know they kind of like stand up and go away from the half guard. I love this kind of position right there because you could start to put pressure in and and you know start the half guard pass really good because uh, he's not even closing the half guard. Yeah. Now he's looking to throw up uh, like an arm lock threat, but it right now it, it doesn't like looks off. Yeah. yeah, it didn't look didn't look real threatening. Um, and and I'd really like to see the referee maybe reset him here pretty soon, just because they're at the edge of the mat and it's a pretty uh, not a real dynamic position there. Uh, <laughs> Especially the big guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're the, not, prob the probability of getting hurt outside is, 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 is huge. And, and as you guys can maybe see, we got the spectators are pretty close, so they're in a little bit of danger also with these big <laughs> you guys. You imagine that. <laughs> um, but yeah, our referee uh, is uh, Scott Rendos, and he, uh, I, I'd like to see him reset these guys here, actually. Uh, well, now, now he's in a sort of a position where he can enter into deep half guard. I know that's a position you really like, Daniel. Yeah, I love, I love that, especially the, to set up the deep half from there. It's a very good position. Not, not everybody do that. Like now they, they're doing a lot of lockdowns, a lot of, uh, you know, electric chairs. I, I still love the, the deep half guard. It's really effective for both gi and no gi. And I, uh, I, 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 at the Pura Villa camp this, this past year, uh, you did, a, did kind of like a section on that deep half guard. And I'll tell you, like, I've seen you teach that before, but just it kind of clicked more for me. And I've been using it a lot more because, because of us practicing it at that, nice. yeah, that jiu-jitsu camp. I, I call the old man jiu-jitsu. What happened is that, that that type of guard you can do forever. It doesn't matter if you're out of, out of shape. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, how heavy you are, how old you are. Everybody that gets into that game, to the half guard, you can really give trouble to anyone, anyone. That's why I love that game. Uh, one of the things, you see how, how flat he is on the half guard. That's, that's one of the things that I don't like it. If you let the person control your upper body, it's very hard for you to use the deep half guard game because your head is stuck. Your head needs to give, get free. So you always, always if, if your intention is to get the deep half, 
don't let the person control your upper body, bottom line. Yeah, it looks like he does have really good upper body control, but again, they're, they're right at the edge of the mat. I'd love to see Scott reset him here. Um, Ah, uh, there we go. I think that was a reset. Uh, let's see what, um, I believe that was a, just a positional reset. Looks like they're going to go back to the half guard. Um, In the middle, yeah. Yeah, and that was the right call. He probably should have done that, you know, a little earlier. Yeah, I see, I see it kind of like a Z guard in there. Uh, this is another thing that a lot of people are doing, and a lot of people have trouble with. Uh, you know, putting weight on that knee in there is not the best idea. It looks like putting weight is the best idea, but then uh, you realize that person can push you anytime they want and create space. Uh, it's better to get in and you know try to get your knee free before you pass. Looks like he's getting back to that upper body control position that we talked about before. Uh -huh. um, and, and I don't know about that strategy on the bottom. It looked like he went after an arm a little bit. Maybe it was more of a. a yeah, he has an outside lockdown. What is not. There's not that many options in there, yeah. but just hold the person from passing your guard. And remember, this is a sub only, so, you know, there's not, uh, there's not a big penalty for, you know, if he gets his guard passed, but I think these big guys, they don't, they, they don't want to be in side control, understandably. But yeah, yeah, and there yeah, you the go. The probability of submission is big when, if that happens. He's trying to draw the arm to the center there, possibly an arm lock from close guard. Mm -hmm. It's hard to adjust positions, you know, on big guys. Like, really, really tough to do it. Like, unless you are, like, hyper-flexible, like, long legs, that's different. But it doesn't, what well, is not the case here, so. <laughs> no, these guys are muscular and big. It looks like, uh, Oh, that was a so, good so Sean, Sean, oh, uh, a good uh, so yeah, uh, I misspoke at the beginning. That's Sean Barrett is the uh, uh, the top, the top really of the, and he just hit a really nice sweep right to the mount position, and now he's looking oh, for an arm lock. Arm lock. He may get this. He's looking. He has a strong arm lock position. Oh, is that a top? I couldn't see. Yeah, it looks like he got the submission. So why, why did he tap? I'm not sure. Uh, it seemed like an early tap. I didn't see the. T oh no! Time ran out. That was that was a oh, time. Okay. The time ran out. That's what. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't hear the time. Uh, it's it's too bad he hit that beautiful technique right at the end there, but now we go into our overtime. So how this works is they both get a chance to start on the back, and whoever gets the fastest submission wins. If uh, one gets a submission, the other one doesn't. The one who gets a submission wins. Uh, if no one gets a submission. Uh, we go into our second overtime period, which is our point, which is our only point scoring period that we have in this event. Um, yeah, one of my black belts had uh, that that combat jujitsu. One of my black belts uh, participated on it. He man kicked the guy's butt the whole the whole match, and you get to the end, uh, you start on the back, and he tapped faster than the other guy, and he lost. <laughs> he, he was devastated. Well, the EBI also, the way they do that's a little different than what we do here just because uh, they have a thing where you can you can win by just escaping the fastest. And yeah, I'm sorry. It was the not combat you just, It was the uh, EBI. The EBI combat. Yes. Yeah, the rules. The it's, combat. It's, oh, it's the same Yeah, it's the same, the same, okay, same yeah. Uh, rules. But I think that, I don't know. What do you think of that, Daniel? I, I, I prefer to see him keep going and 100%, try to get submission. 100%. Because you're still going to be looking for the submission. Yeah. To just escape back control, to, yeah. to win that way, just I don't, I don't know if that's I the way think, you want to I think it's an it's a, it's a overtime, but also a, like a, a chance to start with the submission. And then, of course, if you have a few more seconds to try to finish, you know, it's great. Like, I, th yeah. I, think, yeah, I think what you do here is better, you know, to keep going after, after the person escape. Uh, looks like Sean's got a pretty pretty solid. Yeah, I can't a see he has a gable grip. I, I I love that grip, especially for MMA guys. Uh, instead of going real naked choke, you know, to hold uh, like palm to palm. Yeah, that's, it's, that's it's, a thing to do. It's harder with the gloves too to get that to get the the classic right. One hundred percent. But also the the real naked choke is easier to defend than the the palm to palm choke. Oh, that was a nice transition right to an arm lock. Oh, he got it. He got it. Oh, he got, he got it. it. Wow, that was the win. 
So Sean, Sean Barrett gets an arm lock in uh, our overtime period. Okay, Daniel's gonna go. Uh, Andy's gonna. Daniel's gonna coach, uh, and Andy's gonna take over for him. So.